In probability, we use Venn diagrams to help us when there's overlap between two different events. So here's an example of what I mean by that. In a class of 20 students, 8 only like Clash of Clans, the game, 10 only like Dragon Vale, and 2 like both of these. The, this diagram at the bottom help us put those people in the right place to help us work out probabilities later on. So where do you put them? Well, first of all, this big box here is the sample space. It has this special symbol here, which is the universal set symbol. It just means that everything's got to be inside the box. You can't have anything outside the box. In the class of 20 students, that means that if I put all the students inside this big sample space, some will be out here somewhere, some will be here, some will be here, some will be here. Where they are depends on what they like. So let's do the example. There are 20 students altogether. Eight only like Clash of Clans. So that means only eight, or eight are going to be in this section here where they're inside the Clash of Clans circle because they like Clash of Clans, but they're not inside this part here where it's also inside the Dragon Vale circle. Ten only like Dragon Vale. So that means I need to put ten here and two like both of these. So how it works with the Venn diagram is this two is inside this circle and inside that circle because those two people like Dragon Vale and Clash of Clans, they have to be inside each of the circles. This eight here means that eight people just like Clash of Clans, they don't like Dragon Vale so they can't be inside the Dragon Vale circle. This ten here only like Dragon Vale so they can't be inside the Clash of Clans circle. There are no, but there is nobody outside, so there is nobody in this class that doesn't like Clash of Clans and doesn't like Dragon Vale. Now I've asked a different class the same question. There are 20 students again, but in this case only um, eight like Clash of Clans, but not just Clash of Clans, they you know they might like both. Eight actually like Clash of Clans, ten like Dragon Vale, and two like both. So the two that like both is in the middle here, so it's inside both circles. There are ten people that like Dragon Vale, so I need to put eight here, so that the total inside this circle is two plus eight is ten. I need to put six here because the total in here needs to be eight, because that's how many like Clash of Clans. That leaves four people that don't like either. So let's have a look all together. 8 plus 2 plus 6 is 16, plus 4 is 20. You, f you can calculate the 4 by saying 20 take away 8, take away 2, take away 6, leaving 4 left over that weren't in, in this middle section, or inside C or D. So now we're going to use the Venn diagram to work out some things. First of all, it says shade C. If I'm shading C, then I'm colouring all this in. If I'm looking at the number in C, I need to add on 6 plus 2, 6 plus 2, because they're inside C, and I get 8, which I already knew anyway. And the probability of C is that 8 that are inside the circle C divided by the total different outcomes, which is 20. So my favourable outcomes are the ones in C, 6 plus 2, and the total outcomes is 20. So that's 8 over 20, which is 0.4. So continuing on, this one now says to shade D, so I would colour in that section there, and that's my shade of D. It says to give me the number in D, which is 10, because there are... 2 and 8 inside D, and then therefore the probability of D is 10 over 20, which equals 0.5. In this next question, we're going to look at the things that are not in C. So if I'm going to show the things that are not in C, I've got a lot of work to do because it's everything that's not in C. So it's all of this that's not in C. Be there in a minute. 
So there I have shaded in the things that are not in C. So let's have a look at the um, the number that's not in C. Well, there's this 8 here is not in C, and this 4. So altogether I've got 12 things that are not in C. And that means the probability of getting something that's not in C is 12 over 20, which is 0 0.6. In this example, we're going to find C intersection D. That means the things that are in C and also in D. We're going to do that by colouring in. I'm going to show you a good way to colour it in. You colour in by shading in two different directions and seeing where they cross over. So first of all, I'm going to colour in the things that are in C, and I'm going to colour them in green. And I'm just going to do it roughly, just so you can get the idea. Here we are. There is the circle. Everything inside that I've coloured in or shaded there is inside C. Now I'm going to colour in the things that are in D. Now you notice that while I'm doing this, there is a place where they cross over. Where they cross over is the intersection. It's this section in the middle here. So where I've got my crossing, my shading crossing over is the intersection, and it's showing the intersection of C and D. C intersecting with D. They're intersecting here in the middle. In this example, C union D means it can be in C or in D. Or. It doesn't have to be in both. So let's colour in C. And now let's colour shade D. You can see that they intersect here, but anywhere I've coloured is all of this. That's the difference between intersection and union. Union means any of these numbers in here is OK. So the 6, the 2 and the 8 are all part of C union D. So if I'm looking at C intersection D, I'm looking for the numbers or whatever's inside this middle bit here where the, the two circles overlap. So that would be just the two people in the class. There are two people in the class who are in C intersection D. If I'm looking at C in union D, I'm looking at anybody that's inside both circles. That means everybody except the four. So that's 16 people inside those three sections here. There are 16 people in the union of C and D. Here is an example where I've got two sets of numbers and the first set is A and it has 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 in it and the second set is B and it has 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 in it. What that means is if I'm actually looking at those numbers then 1, 2, 3 is in that part of the A circle, 4 and 5 are in here and 6 and 7 and 8 are in there. So, in A, there is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, but 1, 2 and 3 are just in A, 4 and 5 are in A and also B, and 6, 7, 8 are in just B. So if I'm doing the intersection, the intersection of A, B, the answer to that is 4 and 5. And there are two of those. We write that like this, number of A intersection B equals 2. The other part, what is the A union B? So that's equal to um, all the numbers that are inside A and B or in both. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And we put them inside the curly brackets. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, all of these numbers are in the union of A and B. It really means anything that's in A or B or both. And the number that are in A union B is, t is 8, because there are 8 numbers inside both A and B.